Okay, it is uh, March 18, 5 p.m. Uh, this is a demonstration uh, for the inversion of frequency and time domain data uh, using uh, Geoscience Analyst as the repository for the data and the viewing capability, of course. Uh, and then we'll use uh, SIMPEG EM1D and then the um, open, open source uh, ecosystem to uh, do the, uh, the inversion. Uh, so as you see on my screen uh, right now, uh, we've simulated some uh, time domain and frequency uh, domain data uh, over the, uh, the mineralization of uh, Flint Pond. So the mineralization is conductive and uh, clearly from the time domain and the frequency domain uh, systems, uh, they both see, uh, they, they both see the, uh, the, uh, the mineralization. You can also see some smaller response over the deeper, uh, deeper anomalies. And so we'll see uh, how well the uh, the one the inversions can can recover those. Uh, to start, let's just start from the beginning with a with a brand new project uh, that has uh, nothing in it. So we'll first import data, uh, and then we'll set up our inversions. We try to streamline as much as possible uh, things for for the users. Um, so let's see. Uh, so in the in the folder that uh, that I gave you uh, that. Uh, should be posted uh, on this uh, with this video. Uh, you'll be able to get uh, the original files as well as uh, what we would consider survey files. Uh, so they're GeoSoft GDB file format, which is a standard in the industry. Uh, so first thing first, we'll we can simply load this data by drag and dropping into the into our camera, and then Atlas uh, will automatically pick the x uh, the coordinates as well as the data channel. So here uh, for, uh, on, the, on the VTEM, the DBDT channel is called the uh, SF. And then we have some topography DM. So I click OK. And then we'll, we can see it in camera here. I click on DEM. This is our topography. And then we can also profile our, uh, our data by simply selecting all the lines. And then we have our time, uh, time decays. Uh, so clearly, we, we would know that there is a conductor here, but we'll run an inversion to see if we can figure out the depth and the extent. And likewise for uh, the frequency, so we've submitted the DGM style uh, survey. Um, same thing, drag and drop the GDB into camera, and here we have uh, the three frequencies, uh, the uh, in phase and the quadrature uh, part. So we're just going to load those like this. So uh, now we would like to be able to just uh, directly invert uh, invert those lines. Uh, first, we'll invert a single line on each, on both the frequency and, and in time, see what we get. And then the, you afterwards, if you want to spend the time, it takes about uh, it takes about 10 minutes to invert all the, all the stations uh, at once. But we'll start with a single line for now. So to, um, to start the GUI, um, you first need to have Anaconda installed. And if you do, you should be able to search for the Anaconda prompt uh, using the Windows uh, search button. So we're just going to have a comment prompt here. And I'm going to navigate to where uh, our files are. So I'm just going to CD to this location. If you've never run SIMPEG before or any of the tutorials, uh, you will need to have some packages installed locally on your machine and all you need to do here is just to run the batch file uh, like this and then it will download and install it for, for you and then you'll be, uh, you'll be ready to go. Uh, I already have everything so all I'm going to do here is uh, move inside the tutorial folder where all the, the, uh, the GUIs are. Uh, so I'm going to go to tutorials and then I'm going to start a Jupyter notebook uh, which would, we'll be using to control the inversions. So or like this. And when I run this line, I'll have uh, the interface is in, a, is in a web browser. Everything is run locally, uh, but it just uses the, uh, the web browser as, as the interface. Before I can connect to the, the analyst project, I first need to save it. So I'm going to save this project uh, where I can go find it on the, on the, on the hard drive. So control save, and I'm just going to, I already had it 
create that. So I'm just going to overwrite this this one and call it the working copy. Okay, so now I have this project that's sitting inside uh, my tutorial assets. I have a working copy that is currently open. So what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to uh, tell the the widget where to where to find uh, the, the analyst project, and I'm going to create a, a just a copy, a temporary copy, so that all the inversions happen there, and I don't uh, I don't mess up with the original. It's just good practice. We could work directly into this project, but it's always risky. Okay, so. To run a line in the Jupyter Notebook, you can either run, do it through this button here, so select a cell and run, or shift enter, which is the, the shortcut. So when I when I, after running the second second cell, uh, what it did is connect to the analyst project, and then found two line uh, two line objects, one of which is called DGM and the other one is called the VTM. Um, because on the DGM, it found channels called CPI and CPQ. It already knew that it was a DGM system, so it has nothing to do with the, the name of the file, but with the data uh, channels that were on it. So it detected there was a DGM system and already assigned all the frequencies for us. So you can just double check that everything is, is correct. But basically, um, the, all the in phase and the frequencies should match uh, what we're expecting, which it does here. And we're also pre-assigned some uh, standard uncertainties on it uh, that generally work well uh, in the, in some uh, in conductive environments. Uh, the users can always change those values, and you are also already preset all the offsets, right? So the um, uh, the highest frequencies are eight meter separation, while the fifty six thousand is at uh, six point three offset. Uh, here, the user can select. Uh, one or multiple lines at a time. Uh, here, for the sake of time, we're just going to select one line uh, directly above the mineralization. And then we'll downsample our survey at 50 meters just to speed things up again. And we'll call this, this uh, inversion FTM1. Write the input. And then we're going to start the inversion. So the inversion started already. Um, it will first start with a best filling half space to get the, the background. Um, we're currently letting a user choose, uh, and there's many more options that will expand over time. But right now we have the, these few options. So the user can choose between a best filling half space, a model. If there was a 3D model inside the inside a project here, you could just select it. It will do the interpolation for you and just uh, and just use it, or you could just uh, use a constant value for, for the entire space. Um, target misfit of one. All right, so while this, uh, while this inversion is running, so the best fitting is already done, we're gonna send the time domain uh, inversion right away. So I just need to select my second object that sits here. And because it, it saw the SF channel, it already knows that it's a VTEM system. And so if I select line 10 here, uh, we have our decay curves over the exact same location. And then just for, uh, just to make sure everything is fine, we're gonna double check that our channels are, are all right. Notice that everything from one to eight is not active currently because that was 2007 style of VTEM, only the time, time gate started at, at the channel nine. And so we're just gonna make sure that all our time channels are right. And we have uncertainties and we have zero offsets because it's a coincident loop system. Okay, so everything everything seems fine here. Still down sample at 50 meters. And then we're gonna do a target misfit of one and let's call this new inversion uh, TEM1. We're gonna write input and invert the line. This inversion should also start, there we go. So I'm going to require a lot of CPUs here because I'm running uh, two inversions at the same time, but you should be able to do it. Actually, the frequency is, is now completed, so we can, we can look at it. Let's open it up. So all we need to do is refresh our project by reopening it. OK, 
okay? And so we've already created the line for the time domain. There's nothing on it yet, but our frequency is completed. So we have uh, our five iterations and look at right away. The initial model is the best filling half space. So the connectivity is going to expand uh, all the way to the, to the bottom of the mesh. Then we can look at iteration one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And as good practice, it's obviously good to, um, to look at our uh, observe versus predicted. So inside the same inversion folder, we have a predicted curve. And if we look at our profiles, uh, we can compare uh, both the observed and the predicted. So the observe has been written here. You can see on the camera, this is the observe. This is the observe. And overlay the predicted duration five. So we're fitting most of the most of the peaks. Maybe the background for the highest frequency is not perfectly well fitted. Uh, but otherwise it did a it did a fairly good job for, for the main uh, the main anomaly. Um, I'm going to show the same model in, the, in log space because it's connectivity and it spans a quite a wide, wide range. And so if I show you in log space, you will notice, uh, well, we get obviously a few anomalies and then we get the slightly more conductive uh, near surface. So it's expected because we, we also included overburden. Um, so we should expect to, to be able to see it mostly with the highest frequency. Okay, so the time domain inversion is, is currently rock still running. Um, we can still look at the result load it right away. Um, we don't need to wait uh, until the end, just for sake of time. So I'm going to load the project again. And now notice that my, my uh, time domain uh, line now has all the way to iteration three, which I can display here. All right, so it hasn't converged to the target misfit yet, so we still we'll have some work, some work to do. Uh, but it's uh, it's going to get there. A few more iterations. Same thing here. Uh, we can look at our observe versus predicted by just profiling. And I'm going to have two ones. We're going to have one for the. the data and one for the iterations. So if I zoom right in here, so we're not, right now we're not fitting much of the data. And then hopefully soon iteration six or seven should start to fit it, fit it a, little, a little better. Um, that's about it. Um, I suggest that um, if, you, if you want to uh, experiment more, uh, select different lines, uh, try different connect background connectivities. You can also, uh, we also added one mode to auto detect what the best, uh, the best background uh, floor value would be based on the, based on the best fitting half space. So this is something also quite useful if you have a lot of negative time channels for time domain. Might be too many details, um, but uh, yeah, if you need any help, uh, don't hesitate. Send me an email. I'll post it. I'll post my, my email address at the bottom of the of this video. Um, and then, as a final, as a final goodbye. There we go. So, time domain is completed. Uh, the LT norm. Let's just look at up quickly. There we go. Which is exactly where our conductor is. We have going to have sort of an idea of a, a little bit of a dip on, on it, which is quite, this is quite interesting because um, it's always, always thought that the Wendy inversions are actually not that great at contact conductor, but uh, we found that we've assigned the right, uh, the right parameters. We can actually do a, a really good job in both time and, and frequency. So this is the time domain inversion, and this is the frequency domain inversion. Uh, both give uh, slightly different information, so the frequency is really good for the is really good for the near surface because of the high frequency content in, in the data, whereas the time domain inversion is will will give you deeper uh, deeper response. So if I just compare it, lock space again too, it just gives you a, a deeper 
deeper model. So that's it. Hopefully it's uh, useful. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>